Hey folks, Petula here, your host at All Things Agile. Today I'm going to invite you into mistakes. Yes, get comfortable with the mistakes because that's how we all learn. In particular, we're going to be looking today into four common mistakes beginner agile coaches tend to make. I myself been there, I've made those, but let's not stop on mistakes. Let's, um, you know, let's talk about what we could do instead to move forward and improve. So let's get started. I'll be honest and say that many people, coaches or not, they love to speak. Now, if you're especially into the kind of like sports coach approach in which can you imagine like the coach is going to give a speech to the team before they enter the game to pump them up maybe you're in youtube listening to those and getting inspiration can totally understand that but then you listen and they speak so you might be tempted to think that this is the normal on coaching but actually coaching requires that you listen a lot you listen to what is being said and then you notice patterns you notice energy shifts in the person speaking you know in the mood in the room you notice what they they say what they they don't seem to want to reveal so the things they are not saying you notice even their body language in there so how do you begin to listen more i suggest two things the first is a mindfulness exercise to start the conversation, especially if you know it's a difficult conversation to have. I do remind myself that I'm there to listen. I, I literally tell myself that. I tell myself to be very attentive because while others will be speaking, maybe even on top of each other, I am the one who is going to be there in support to listen. And then I like to combine that with some breathing exercises, something simple, short, but you know, it's relaxing, it's calming, and you then can enter the conversation in the right state of mind. For those of you like me who might be thinking that you speak to actually be in action, just show up for the conversation with pen and paper. Write things down, take notes, doodle. That's not only you focusing your attention, but you're actually doing something that is quite useful if that is the urge that spoils your coaching conversations. It's not uncommon as we start with agile coaching that we are big believers in the mindset and then we know all these things and techniques and we learn those tools and then we start noticing all that's wrong with our teams and start helping them with some agile cure. The problem is, do they really need that specific help you want to give them? And most importantly, if you don't get selective and want to teach them something every single time, basically all your interactions are about fixing something and sometimes even fixing people. And it's quite off-putting. Not to mention that they will feel, you know, your team will feel that they only do things wrong because every time they talk to you is less than time. It comes from a place of great intentions. I know you want to shortcut your team's journey through Agile. But here's the thing, that's actually not possible. We all have our own timings when it comes to learning and we're all at different stages in our Agile journey anyway. So what can you do then to stop inflicting help to all the time, you know, to individuals and to your agile teams. If you already started listening, it becomes a lot easier because now you are noticing all these patterns and then you can show the mirror to the team. You now have the receipts of, uh, you know, on when these patterns are occurring and then you can talk about the impact and then invite them into the conversation of what can be done. And if they say yes, then you can showcase all that knowledge in service of your Agile teams. Now, if your urge to teach all your Agile secrets come from a place of insecurity, I'd say more of that mindfulness piece is necessary. Choose a moment in the day, every day, reserve a time for that. Like I myself like to do those things in the morning, first thing, I feel like it prepares me for the day ahead. But all this requires is that you choose an activity that centers you in a time that's really fit with your schedule. And it can be anything. It can be a run or a walk, meditation, yoga, breathing exercises, 
visualization. Just make sure that you add some sort of mantra, literally a powerful message that you're going to craft for yourself, reminding yourself that you're actually quite competent and that you don't need to prove that by imposing your knowledge on people. Let's be real. The road to success is paved with failures and you will face many failures as a coach. And so will your teams as they're trying to think in this different way and then try to do things differently to reflect this new mindset. Nobody wants to be the fool. Nobody wants to feel unskilled. People just don't want to do things wrong. And sometimes that is why they resist agile change. So showing examples on how things can go wrong, how they did go wrong for you when you first started, making, you know, acknowledging the difficulties in the process and making it all the more human. Maybe you have a hard time. I really bet actually that you had difficulties understanding and using prioritization, you know, one single thing at a time, one after the other sequentially better than multitasking. Maybe you were even cheating on your iterations, making it seems as if things you know, were fitting the cycle, plus or minus one or two or three days. Maybe you were even the one who was not so engaged in the agile retrospectives with the team. So if troubles are so common, what can you do as an agile coach? Just share your own journey. How is it for you? Uh, maybe it could be your journey as a coach, but also even before your journey with your teams, the teams you were part of. Normalize learning from failure, not just failing. Failing should serve a bigger purpose. Failing without paying attention and just repeating the same mistakes over and over again, that is actually not very helpful. Unless later on, you're kind of using that as a meta learning in itself. The final mistake is having a chaotic approach to your coaching practice. What do I mean by that? I mean, literally not having an approach on how you show up and how you develop your agile coaching skills. Today, you might be showing up as the Jedi who can solve all problems. And then tomorrow, you're more like the ninja, can't be found anywhere. Maybe yesterday, you were talking like there's no tomorrow. And then today, zip, you say absolutely nothing. That's a lot of change and even inconsistency to your practice. And you might not even be noticing and um, in showing up as a person with a different mood every day. You run the risk of coming across as unreliable. People might not understand you. And people usually don't want to work with those that they don't understand. So am I saying you have no right to be moody or to change your style or to use different styles with different teams? Absolutely not. In fact, I assure you, you will change your style as you develop your skills and the experiences you go through will help shape up um, who you become as a coach. What I'm saying though is stay consistent for a period of time before you change. If you want to be more of a hands-on coach, seek engagements that puts you in that type of environment. If you want to work more on technical aspects of agility, grow your skills in that area. Being consistent is a benefit not only for your teams, but also for yourself, because then you have a chance to try it on and see if it fits. You are learning different stances, different skills, and that requires more than just theoretical knowledge. It requires practice. It requires doing exactly what you tell your teams. You can't rush learning, so you can't skip practice. And for that, you need to be intentional. What skills, what stances are you interested in growing next? Treat your agile coaching skills as a product. Have a vision, have a backlog, prioritize the backlog, iterate over your learnings. Yes, be meta here and have fun. And remember, you're never done growing as an agile coach, so don't leave it all to chance. Have some planning and intention around things and be agile. Remember, that's not because you planned the course that you're not allowed to change when other opportunities come your way. I hope this video was used. So even if you're not in the beginning of your agile coaching journey, I wish you now tons of success and intentional learnings. I'll see you on the next video. Bye.